Hello everybody. Today we're going to be learning about section 8.15, which is on pathogens and infectious diseases. There is a lot of essential knowledge that you will be gaining on all of these different types of infectious diseases and how they're transmitted and all of that, but the overall learning objective is that you can explain human pathogens and their cycling through the environment. So we're going to start with talking about pathogens versus vectors. A pathogen, which I gave you the little bacteria icon there, is a living organism, a virus, a bacteria, a fungus, a protist, a worm, that causes an infectious disease. Now, it's important to kind of note the difference between an infectious disease versus a non-infectious. Infections, infectious diseases, are ones that are capable of being spread or transmitted. So something like HIV, Ebola, COVID-19, tuberculosis, things like that. Non-infectious diseases are not transmittable. So things like asthma, cancer, heart disease, you cannot give heart disease to someone because they came in contact with you. Those are non-infectious diseases. So specifically here, we are talking about infectious diseases. Now, it's important to be aware that pathogens adapt and evolve. They are like living organisms. So they go through natural selection and evolution so they can adapt and evolve to take advantage of humans as hosts for their reproduction and spread. Now, clearly pathogens can infect all sorts of animals, but like for our class, we're going to be focusing on humans because y'all are humans taking AP environmental science. And so we're going to kind of focus on us as humans, but this also happens in all like living animals. But so specifically like for humans, they will adapt and evolve so that they can thrive like um, with humans as their hosts for reproduction and spread. So for example, COVID-19 is a SARS associated coronavirus that mutated and evolved to become easily as like really good at surviving and reproducing in humans and being spread. So, um, COVID-19 is proof that we have evolving pathogens, which can make them hard to fight. So vectors, which should give you a little rat and a um, bug right here, because vectors are going to be a living organism, typically like a rat or mosquito are common ones, that carry and transmit infectious pathogens to other organisms. Um, so there are a lot, and we'll go through a bunch of examples, but there's a lot that like mosquitoes can pass to humans. Now, one of the things to be aware of with vectors is that climate change is shifting our equatorial climate zones. So they're moving farther north and south, not just like on the equator there. So what's happening is warmer temperatures are going to allow pathogens and their vectors to spread north and south to parts of the world that was previously too cold because many pathogenic bacteria and viruses survive and replicate in warmer weathers. They don't love really cold areas. So as we're getting warmth spreading, this means that the pathogens and the mosquitoes, that will be spreading too. So we're going to see more of this spreading of these infectious diseases. And this map is going to show you a what we can see for the expanding mosquito range here. Mosquitoes are going to be vectors for things like dengue fever, Zika virus, yellow virus. And this is showing us over time how mosquito habitat is predicted to be changing over the next like 50 to 60 years. And so we are looking at the number of months when the disease is able to be transmitted through these mosquitoes. And I'll move this so you can see the whole thing. So red is going to be where it is going to be spending like an entire year long is where you can get this disease from the mosquitoes. Blue is gonna be a couple, but as you're watching over time, we're seeing it spread. It's not just like at the equator anymore because everywhere is getting warmer. So these mosquitoes can thrive everywhere and take their pathogens all over with them. So climate change is also impacting this. All right, so now we're going to look at infectious disease and development. I'll try to move this. There we go. So one of the things um, that is kind of a like global theme is that typically less developed, poorer countries are going to have higher rates of infectious diseases. And there's a lot that goes into this. One thing is the fact that they have less sanitary waste disposal methods. They don't always have like really fancy landfills and recycling options. Um, and so you're going to have a lot of examples like we're seeing in this river here 
where pathogens can be reproducing in open waste areas where children may be playing or animals may be scavenging, and it can easily be passed on to humans because it's not properly treated. Also, there's going to be less access to healthcare facilities and antibiotic medications. So there's a lot of um, different pathogens that antibiotics will wipe out because they are from bacteria. But if you don't have access to the antibiotics or you don't have as many healthcare facilities, then these infectious diseases are going to be even more powerful because you aren't going to have the ability to fight them. Also, we're going to have a lack of treatment or filtration for drinking water and sewage treatment. So you're going to expose people to bacterial and viral pathogens in water, often coming from human waste. So you're going to have like septic that's just going into the water, or even you're going to have animal um, waste that's going straight into the water and isn't able to be treated or filtered. Now, in tropical climates and more like open air living, people are going to be more exposed to vectors like mosquitoes, and we're going to have less money for vector eradication. For example, like spraying down mosquito breeding grounds with insecticides to kill them. So if you're going to be like outside more because it's hot, there's going to be more mosquitoes and you're going to be more at risk for getting these. Now we're going to talk through a bunch of like specific types. Um, these are going to be kind of big, especially globally. We might not have them so much in the United States, but important to be aware of. And these are the ones that you need to know for the AP test. The first one is the plague. This is a bacterial infection. So it's pathogen that is transmitted by fleas. Fleas are the vector. They can attach to mice and rats. Um, but the problem is they can also jump to us. So although these um, we get it from flea bites. So let's say these fleas are living on the rats and then the rats are around us. The flea can hop off the rat and bite us and then we can end up getting the plague. Now this, uh, it's generally called the plague, but it's also been called the bubonic plague or the black plague. So if you've heard of like how the bubonic plague wrecked Europe hundreds of years ago, it's this one. Now, luckily, modern antibiotics are very effective against it. However, we do still have some isolated instances. Every once in a while, you'll see a news story that like the bubonic plague just popped up in Los Angeles or stuff. And again, we're able to treat it, but it does still exist. And if there's areas where you don't have access to those antibiotics, it can be devastating. Another one is tuberculosis. This is a bacterial infection that targets the lungs. This used to be very large in the United States, like in the early 1900s, 1800s. Um, and what it is, is it's transmitted by breathing bacteria from body fluids, especially like respiratory droplets. So if somebody coughs on you and they have tuberculosis, that is how you can get it. Um, and it can also linger in the air for hours. And it's going to be a bacteria that gets into the lungs and can actually like destroy the lungs. It causes night sweats, fever, coughing, blood. It is treatable in developed nations that have access to powerful antibiotics. But tubercul tuberculosis is something that we are going to see in higher amounts in developing nations that don't have access to those powerful antibiotics as easily. Now, it's important to be aware that the leading cause of disease, that tuberculosis is the leading cause of death by disease in the developing world. There's about 9 million cases per year and 2 million deaths per year. Now, to put this in perspective, because I feel like COVID is kind of one we're all aware of right now, um, in the past thus far, a year and a half, which right now I am recording this in April of 2021. So the numbers at this point is that we've had about 2.8 million global deaths from COVID, which hopefully kind of puts it into perspective that typically tuberculosis has been the leading death by disease in the developing world with 2 million deaths, but we are seeing 2.8 million. So it's important to... Um, like kind of take a moment and recognize the seriousness of COVID-19, but also like be aware that they're sort of similar ballpark numbers with tuberculosis and with COVID-19. And just to kind of be aware of the level that this is something that's very serious, especially in developing worlds. So we might not see it so much in the United States, but like it's important to be aware of because we're getting 2 million deaths a year from it. Now, malaria is one that's very common all over the place. What it is, is it's a parasitic protist, that is the pathogen, 
that is caused from bites from infected mosquitoes. So mosquitoes are the vector. This is going to be really common in sub-Saharan Africa and other tropical regions of the Middle East, Asia, South and Central America, reoccurring, um, which is going to give like reoccurring flu-like symptoms. It's going to kill mostly children under five. Um, when I went to Haiti, I had to have malaria meds because it's prevalent there. So um, kind of these like tropical regions is where you're going to be seeing it. So if you look at this map, the incidence of malaria, clearly Africa is going to be the big one, but we are seeing it spread here, especially like near the equator and these warmer like tropical regions. Now, one of the ways that malaria can be combated because mosquitoes are the vectors is you can use insecticides to kill the mosquitoes. And the US actually did eradicate malaria in 1951 by killing mosquitoes and all other sorts of options. Like you can have meds to prevent malaria, um, but it is something that can be combated with insecticides to kill the mosquitoes so that they are no longer giving them to the humans. We also have West Nile virus. It is a virus that is caused, again, by mosquitoes being the vector. Now, birds are actually like the main host of it. So usually like the mosquitoes are going to be living on the birds, but this virus can be transmitted to humans by the mosquitoes if they bite an infected bird and then bite humans. So even though like West Nile virus is going to be in the birds, mosquitoes can bite them, then bite us, and they can transmit it. Now, West Nile is dangerous because it causes brain inflammation, which can be fatal. So it is kind of a serious brain-related one, as is Zika virus. Zika virus is a virus that, again, is transmitted through mosquitoes, but it also can be transmitted through sexual contact. So like if a person has Zika virus and they have sex with somebody else, that is another way that this can be transmitted. Now, Zika virus causes babies to be born with abnormally small heads, which is, you can see a picture here of what a Zika baby looks like, and it damages the brains. It can be passed from mother to infant. So this is why Zika virus is like a, one that women who are pregnant or trying to get pregnant need to be very careful in areas with Zika virus, um, especially because as of right now, we have no known treatment. And so prevention is going to be like focus mainly on like eliminating mosquito populations or avoiding the mosquitoes. So for women that are living in areas where they have a lot of mosquitoes and Zika virus, they need to take precautions for that. And there are women in like developing developed worlds who will avoid traveling to these areas if they are pregnant. Um, because again, like when we're talking about brain damage and all of that to babies, that's something that clearly we want to avoid. And so the only treatment we have at this point is just getting rid of the mosquitoes. We also have SARS, which stands for Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome. SARS is a coronavirus, which is a type of virus that is caused by respiratory droplets from infected persons. It is primarily transmitted by touching or inhaling fluids from an infected person, and it causes a form of pneumonia. The first initial SARS outbreak occurred in Southeast Asia, um, but y'all are probably more familiar with SARS because SARS-CoV-2 is the virus that causes the COVID-19 disease. Um, and so, as I said earlier, like COVID came because we have a mutating SARS virus. Um, and so, yes, this is why you might be more familiar with SARS, but SARS is kind of like a, like, overarching coronavirus type of like coronavirus is a group of viruses. SARS is like of those coronaviruses. And then COVID-19 is like the disease that comes from a specific SARS one. So it's kind of like the levels of it. But um, yeah, so this one is showing you a little COVID virus right there. And then we also have MERS, which stands for the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome. This one is, it basically like gives you the same type of things as SARS. It is a respiratory. It comes from a virus. It is going to be transmitted from animals to humans. Um, we're going to see kind of the same like pneumonia, respiratory related things. This one just originated on the Arabian Peninsula. 
Now we have cholera, which is a bacterial infection caused by drinking infected water. This is going to cause vomiting, muscle cramps, diarrhea, and can cause severe dehydration. People will die of dehydration from cholera because they're like vomiting and diarrhea so much that they can't keep enough fluids to stay alive. It's a, hor I mean, all of these are horrible, um, but cholera is like a common sad one. And cholera can be passed, it can be introduced by water that is con contaminated with um, human feces or undercooked seafood. So for example, like, again, when we're talking about these developing nations where we don't have like always access to clean drinking water, if you're having like human waste that is going into areas where people are gathering their water or playing in their water, this is going to be a source of cholera and why it is pretty common in developing nations. All right, here's going to be your practice FRQ for 8.15, where you're practicing the suggested skill of explaining the relationship between different characteristics of, of environmental concept processes, using like visual representations. So I want you to look at this map here, which shares the um, population with access to improved drinking water from 2015. So like dark blue is 100% have access to improved drinking water. Lighter is going to be like less access to improved drinking water. So based on this map, I want you to make a claim about a region of the world that likely has a high incidence of cholera. And that's going to be your practice FRQ for 8.15. And those were your notes on 8.15 about pathogens and infectious diseases.